This is episode one. There's this project I wanted to tell you about. I called it The World of Darwin. So my name is Victor, and if you excuse my French accent, then let's talk about it. The idea of this channel is very simple. It's a trip around the world on a boat. So what's so special about that project? Yet another copy of Sailing La Vagabonde? Well, not really, no. The idea for this trip is actually to sail on the footsteps of one of the greatest men of the history of science, Charles Darwin. For those who have skipped the guy, is one of the most influential scientists of all times, notably because he brought us the theory of evolution, which is a pillar of modern biology. When he was 22 years old, young Charles Darwin embarked on the HMS Beagle for a trip that will last five years around the world. He departed from Plymouth. Plymouth? 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 Plymouth. He departed from Plymouth in 1831. Darwin was the naturalist of the boat, so his mission was to observe and describe the nature around him. So, that's kind of a simple plan. I just want to sail the same route as Darwin did. Oh, putain la fâche! Whoa! But what's exactly the point of going to each and every places where some guy went two centuries ago? Isn't that just boring history? Well, it actually struck me when I took a look at this. What we see is one of the beautiful landscape of the island of Morea in French Polynesia. Charles Darwin sailed here on November the 15th, 1835, and it occurred to me that he might well have looked at the very same landscape that we are looking at right now. But has he, really? I'm in Papeete right now, the capital of French Polynesia on the island of Tahiti. It seems quite obvious, for instance, that Darwin didn't have to wait for the green light to cross the street. But how can we go deeper into the comparison? Right. In his world-famous book, Voyage of the HMS Beagle, Charles Darwin describes the state of the island in a rich and colorful way. For instance, the Tahitian society has evolved a lot over the course of the past two centuries. People were much more tattooed at that time and the society was even ruled by a queen. But what is even more interesting to me is Darwin's descriptions of the state of the natural world. I'm having a swim in the lagoon of Moria, which is filled with many species of corals and fishes. I had the chance to walk here for three months diving, filming, and enjoying the diversity of life. But the beauty of the landscape is hiding a terrible reality. The coral reef is dying at an alarming rate because of climate warming. When Darwin stepped foot on this station beach two centuries ago, humanity did not yet start to emit much CO2 in the atmosphere, which will eventually lead to the climate warming that we now experience. And these CO2 emissions are precisely what put the world's biodiversity at risk today. So, what about sailing in Darwin footsteps? Well, basically, the goal of this expedition will be to compare the world as it was in the early 1800s to the world as it is today. You might want to ask, why should we do that? That's a good question and I will give you a very simple answer. So we don't forget how the world used to be before we started impacting it on a large scale. To simply draw a baseline of what our generation has now to protect. In other words, to fight landscape amnesia. Thanks to Darwin's book, we have a very precise description of the state of the world as it was at this key moment of our history. My idea for this expedition is to sail around the world and meet the scientists who study natural life, asking them a very simple question. What has changed since Darwin was here? You might be wondering, 
who are you to do that? And that would be a fair question. So let me give you some insights. First things first, I'm French. <laughs> C'est pas vrai. I did not get that already. I'm a filmmaker who has been working on documentary films for six years and I traveled a lot for my job. Between 2014 and 2015, I spent one and a half year in Greenland working for Under the Pole, an expedition dedicated to underwater exploration. In 2017, we crossed the Northwest Passage in the north of Canada on board the expedition sailboat, the Y. I've also been working with them here in Polynesia as an underwater cameraman. So if you want to check the work that we did, you can click here. What led me to do this job is that I firmly believe that films are great instruments of change. They can raise awareness of the public on key issues like climate change. Films create a common reference of what needs to be protected and can even advise us on how to do it. And that's exactly what I want to do for this project, The World of Darwin. But for now, I'm still on the Y and I first need to fly back home 15,000 kilometers from here in Paris. Here we are, back in Paris. Let's summarize the project. I want to sail around the world and meet the scientists, asking them a very simple question. What has changed since the time of Darwin? And make films on YouTube about that. That's a bold project, but why not? Okay then, so where's your boat, young man? Yeah, now comes the problems. One, I don't have a boat. Two. Even if I had a boat, I wouldn't know how to sail it. And three, I'm in Paris, which is not the best place to learn how to sail, right? Right. But you know what? I guess that with enough hard work and effort, we can turn any dream into a reality. So here's the starting point, Paris. Where will this adventure take us? I don't know, will we make it? I don't know, but let's give it a try. My plan is to regularly give you some updates through this YouTube channel. So stay tuned, and I guess I'll see you next time. A bientôt. Da, da, da.